Morning everyone, guess what? We're back out camping, shock. But we're doing something slightly different today. I've been very kindly invited to Bjorn Outdoors Bushcraft School just outside of Bury St Edmunds, which is my local town. So I'm really thankful. I'm out here with Richard, who I met about an hour ago. We're gonna go do a bit of quad biking today. We're gonna cook up some food. We're gonna be camping in his woods tonight. Should be a really good day, really looking forward to it. Bit fresh this morning, but we've got the warm kit on. We're good to go. Got the dog with us as well. Let's have it. Let's have it. on the other <laughs> when you're holding the camera you've got no brakes. Well that's great fun. Right we've just stopped in a little bit of woodland, gonna make ourselves a little fire, get a coffee on the go. Rich has just been showing me a load of the land that they've got around here. Some really nice bits of woodland, lovely bits of countryside. At least the sun's out as well, we've got a nice day for it mate. Oh this is Richard by the way, we haven't hey, even guys. introduced Richard yet. Yeah and my dog Co. Here's Co. Co, where are you, mate? Co. Stop. Two Polaris beasts carrying us on our journey. What do you reckon, boy? What do you reckon? <laughs> Good boy. Oh, you like a fuss, do you? Yes. Oh. We're all brewskied up. Warm yeah. bellies full of coffee. Dog's happy, gonna jump back on the quads. That's it, we're back in the woods. Well, Richard, thanks very much for that, mate. That was awesome. That's right, it's been a good day, isn't it? Loved it, it's been really nice exploring all the land. Back at the spot, gonna get this fire going because it is cold again, isn't it? It's bitter. That's lovely. I 
I've been slowly collecting my rocks <laughs> go around. This was a good find in the middle of a field and this one came from Cornwall. Do you see like one video yeah. where you just get all the clips of you doing like doing chicken? Yeah. Just and like all the times you've missed. <laughs> like you know, when, you know when you miss the block as well and the axe yeah. comes out <laughs> and just like make a video just with all the bloopers. Do you fancy a little bit of uh, sacred llama incense on the go? Yeah, you can do. I love a bit of incense on campaign. I always take yeah. a box. Well, I was smashed another coffee. Rich has just got some tomato soup on the go. So we have a little bit of a snack this afternoon. The fire's going nice now. How are you feeling, dude? Pretty good, actually. Pretty good? Yeah, it's nice to be warming up by the fire. Tell us about uh, tell us about Bjorn Outdoors. What's the score? What's the crack? What do you offer? Bjorn Outdoors. Bjorn uh, Outdoors. So we're a bushcraft school. Yeah. Um, just outside Bury St Edmunds. Yeah. And we're trying to offer... Um, sort of overnighters for people yep. who want to come out here and experience the outdoors but just don't have the access so we'll give coaching getting smoke in the eye there um, <laughs> we can coach people into obviously how to light fires how to set up their tarps look after them overnight cook them a meal uh, and then just let them enjoy the good old outdoors Sounds good, man. I'm going to leave the link to Richard's page down below and your Instagram as well. That's where you can find you, yeah? On Instagram, uh, email address and all that sort of good stuff. And it's really cool that you're in Bury St Edmunds because that's like my local town. So when you asked me to come up and have yeah. a look, like, I was pretty buzzing because a few people ask me, like, if I know anyone that run bushcraft courses or have anywhere that they can go and do this sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so here you are, Richard, your man, if you're yeah. Suffolk, Norfolk. Right in the heart of Suffolk. Right in the heart. Yeah. And good old Barry St Edmunds. Yeah, I am slightly biased, but it is lovely around here as well. <laughs> He's not wrong, though. Yeah. He's not wrong. Um, have you read the book, The Comfort Crisis? It's good. What's The Comfort Crisis? In a nutshell, it's about how our lives nowadays have become a little bit too comfortable mm -hmm. so it stops us obviously not that that's a bad thing but it stops us appreciating little things like when you're at home turning on a light switch yep. or having hot running water yep. and coming out and doing doing stuff like this doing bushcraft or just camping outside yep. it means that you know we have the hardship here like it's not very warm we've had to make a fire um, and then when you go back home, it makes you appreciate those little things little that things. you have in life yeah. a lot more. Even just sticking do. the kettle on for a coffee or... Absolutely. Going to the toilet somewhere, sit down. Mm. I mean, it's like when we had that coffee earlier and we're like, well, we've got to find some wood, we've got to get some tinder, yep. we've got to light a fire, yep. heat up the water, just so we can sit there and enjoy a coffee for five minutes. But you appreciate that little bit more because you've worked, you've worked for it as well, it. haven't you? Well, the soup went down an absolute treat. We're just having a little walk around the woods at the minute. Got a load of ash trees over here, a load of hazel. What else have we got in here? There's some lime, one there. Um, there's hornbeam in here. These are cedars. You've got a bit of an issue going on though. Tell me about the uh, ash the, dieback. The ash dieback, the charlia. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a fungus which gets into the um, ash trees and it is unfortunately slowly killing them yeah which is a bit of a problem so we have been thinning out some of the ash trees some of the smaller ones we're leaving some of the larger ones hoping that they will continue to grow yeah and hopefully resist but we'll clear out the smaller ones plant up some new trees so that they can grow to replace the ash trees yeah and then if the big ones don't make it there'll be something else already started to obviously take their place so that's the goal, that's sort of what's going on in this area. Yeah, the one positive is it gives you a big pile of wood. I've got a big pile <laughs> of wood here, yeah, you can see it in the middle of these. So. Not getting cold anytime soon. No, and you, obviously this one you can see has really been hit hard with oh, yeah. the dieback, so it's gone fully. Dead hedge. Yes. Big parasols. They're meant to give one in four people really bad stomach upset, aren't they? The leaves are crisping up with the frost as well. I don't think they've 
<laughs> haven't unfrosted today, haven't defrosted today. <laughs> Zero sawing needed on this one. <laughs> Just a bit of axe work, eh? Big stack over there. Yeah, smash them up. Back to the warmth. I'd be quite impressed if I can get this in one. <laughs> yes, lad. Yes, mate. Richard's treating us to dinner. We're having a curry. What are we having? Pheasant. Uh, pheasant curry. Pheasant curry. Pre-prepared all the spices and everything. Yep. Just got the lanterns on the go. We lost the light pretty quickly, actually. Once we went for a little walk around the woods, come back to camp, sort of noticed the uh, light was on its way out, and now we've got pure darkness. But I want to go and have a look at the moon, because that's really big. I'd like to get a shot of that. So what's left to do on the curry? What's, what's left on the prep? Um, the only prep that I have left to do is chop up one onion. <laughs> which is so pathetic, I should have done it before we came out, but. I that think... is good prep though. Yeah. One onion, we'll take that. Yeah. Put some butter in there. A little dutchy on the go. Probably quite a lot of butter. Didn't bring a roll mat or anything today, I'm just out on the pelt. I've just set my tarp up over here, I'll show you quickly. Hasty A frame, nothing too crazy. I'm using bank line as my ridge line today. And then because I'm sitting on the pelt, I've not set up or anything. But that's me for tonight. Give it a smell. Yeah. And see what you can identify. Oh, it smells good. Some obviously cinnamon in there. Bit of cinnamon, yeah. Uh, garlic, chili. Yeah. Is that turmeric? Yeah, turmeric. Uh, salt is in there. Some celery salt. Ooh. Some cloves and an enthusiastic grating of nutmeg. <laughs> so this is actually a Valentine Warner recipe. Valentine Warner. Yeah. From his What to Eat Now book. What's that little Petromax one? It's not. What's mine? The 4.5? What's that? That's the 3. That's the 3. I'm looking forward to this, man. Never had a pheasant curry before. Oh, it's going it's to be good. It's gonna, a lot will change when we put the uh, spices in. So you what, I'm being treated here, Richard. Mm. Oh yes. Lovely, mate, that is lovely. Okay, my dudes, that's all I actually recorded on that trip. To every one of you that's watched my videos this year, thank you so much. I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So here's to an awesome 2023. I'll still be putting out as much content as I can. Have a good one, everyone. Big love to you all. Cheers.